Why have humans invented so many dragon legends? Why do they appear in numerous cultures? We can find dragon legends in the Americas, ancient China, Africa, Australia, Europe, and just about every region on the planet. Why would humans in different unconnected regions all have legends of dragons? Young Earth creationists have used this as evidence that the Earth must be young. Legends of dragons are really stories of humans encountering dinosaurs, which didn't go extinct millions of years ago, but lived alongside humans a few thousand years ago, until they were hunted to extinction. After all, what else could explain why so many separate cultures share legends of giant reptilian creatures? But perhaps there's a more logical explanation that young earth creationists have overlooked. The scientific consensus is dinosaurs died out millions of years ago, while some evolved into various species of modern birds. There is no scientific reason to believe dinosaurs and humans ever walked the earth at the same time, but young earth creationists challenge this consensus and argue humans did live with dinosaurs. Part of their evidence is the existence of various dragon legends found across the globe. On their website, Answers in Genesis says, dragons appear again and again in the records of cultures around the world, as well as in their art and pottery. The similarities are hints that many accounts may be based on actual encounters with these creatures. Dinosaurs and other reptiles, which God created on day five and six, and which survived the flood aboard Noah's Ark. Young Earthers often argue ancient humans from various independent cultures all have legends of giant reptilian creatures that we have called dragons. How could humans isolated in Asia, Australia, the Americas, Africa, or Europe all have stories of humans encountering dinosaur-like creatures if they didn't actually encounter dinosaurs? It would be one thing if different ancient cultures had legends of entirely different mythical beasts, but why would they all share stories of giant reptilian creatures? Let's start with another mythical creature so we can make a comparison. Throughout the ancient Greco-Roman world, we have stories of humans encountering cyclopses, which were said to be giant one-eyed humanoid creatures. As far as I'm aware, most people today do not think cyclopses ever existed, even though ancient authors like Virgil spoke of them as an extinct race. Given we've never found the remains of a humanoid species of cyclops, it's more likely the cyclopses came merely from the imagination of early humans. But what if there's a more logical basis as to why ancient people thought cyclopses once existed. Imagine you were born 2,000 years ago in ancient Greece. You have no modern scientific knowledge on how old the Earth is or what species went extinct thousands of years before you were born. But one day you find a skull like this in the ground. This is a mammoth skull, but without any knowledge of paleontology, you might assume this was the skull of a giant that only had one eye. In fact, this appears to have happened at a point in medieval history. In 1371 on Sicily, Giovanni Boccaccio was present when locals found a giant skull and bones. Boccaccio identified it as the Cyclops from the Odyssey. But modern paleontologists have also reported that an extinct species of dwarf elephants once roamed Sicily. So it is plausible that the remains of one of these elephants were discovered in 1371, and the locals thought it was the skull of a Cyclops. In fact, the historian Adrian Mayer did a comparison she drew a map of where ancient people reported they found bones of giant monsters, and a map of where scientists have found rich deposits of mastodon, mammoth, and other large vertebrate fossils, and she found the locations overlapped. Ancient people seem to have found the fossils of extinct large mammals and assumed they were the bones of giants, cyclopses, or other monsters. In fact, we find evidence that ancient writers believed in the existence of giant monsters, partially because of giant bones. Pausanias reported the bones of numerous giants were found. Clement of Rome also reported that giant bones were found, confirming for him that giants once existed. Pliny the Elder reported a skeleton 46 cubits long, which many said were the remains of a giant. Plutarch reported that Sertorius was skeptical of a place a giant was said to be buried, and had his men dig up the remains. After uncovering the bones, he became convinced what he uncovered was really a giant, and had the men rebury the bones, and he offered a sacrifice. Adrian Mare in her book, The First Fossil Hunters, notes that ancient people were very interested in bones, and when they were found, it often confirmed their beliefs that monsters, dragons, and giants once existed. 
Now when you look at a mammoth skull, you might be confused as to why ancient people would think this was a humanoid species. But often ancient writers reported that giants had deformed faces and didn't necessarily look like modern humans. Mare also demonstrated using a toy model that the bones of a mammoth could be rearranged so as to resemble a biped giant with a deformed face. Furthermore, often ancient people would only report that a single bone or tooth was found and they would construct a whole giant out of that alone. Phlegon notes a tooth was sent to the Emperor Tiberius and he had a model of the whole giant constructed from the single tooth. Often a single bone was found and an entire monster was inferred from that alone. Even in modern forensic cases, animal bones often get confused for human remains, being that the bones of other mammals are similar to human bones. Ancient humans may have come across a shoulder bone or a leg bone of a mastodon and thought it belonged to a giant human. And given the vast amount of reports we find, it makes sense that ancient people found gigantic bones and became convinced giants and monsters once existed. And this is a perfectly logical explanation as to why people thought dragons once existed. Instead of it being that humans had to live with dinosaurs for them to tell stories of dragons, it's more likely they merely found dinosaur fossils and constructed legends of dragons. And we can find evidence for this hypothesis. Alien reported that the bones of a gigantic dragon were discovered. Claudian said there were remains of dragons found in Sicily. Strabo reported that Postodonius found the jaw of a giant dragon. Herodotus reported he observed the remains of flying snakes. Diodorus claimed that Dionysus killed a monster in western Egypt, and it is still buried there. So when ancient people reported stories of dragons, it is more likely they merely found the remains of extinct animals, and assumed they found the creatures of mythology. Mare says this is likely where the legend of the griffin came from. The ancient Mediterranean world believed in griffins, a creature that was said to have the body of a lion and the head and wings of an eagle. They were often reported to exist in Central Asia and guard treasure. We've never found griffins, but we have found in Central Asia the remains of protoceratops, which had four legs and a beak like modern birds. Paleontologist Jack Horner said, It now seems that the winged griffin of the Gobi Desert, that fanciful hybrid of avian and mammalian features, struck closer to the truth than anyone could have guessed. Ancient nomads likely found protoceratops remains and tried to figure out what animal it was. Given that it had mammal-like features, but also a beak like a bird, it would be plausible for an ancient person to infer a half-bird, half-mammal creature and assume they still existed. As Horner says, If you came across a protoceratops skeleton, or any other unusual skeleton, there was every reason to believe that similar animals existed, if not in the immediate area, then somewhere else. What's more, there was nothing to suggest that the group to which an unfamiliar animal belonged might have died out. Mare suggests legends of griffins grew out of finding these bones and were spread to keep out rival gold seekers in the region. Similarly, if you came across a skull like this, your first impression might be that it looks eerily similar to a dragon from a fantasy novel. However, this is actually the skull of an extinct species related to modern giraffes. Here is another skull of an extinct giraffe-like species. Many ancient reports of where dragons lived also align with regions where modern scientists have found fossils like these. Additionally, we can also account for why gems were associated with dragon legends. Mare says, I think the Indian lore about special gems prized out of dragon skulls alludes to the crystals that can form on mineralized bones. The detailed observations of the first modern investigator of the Sawalik fossils confirm my theory. Large glittering calcite crystals and tubular selenite crystals are common in the Sawalak fossils. The bottom line is we need to realize ancient humans were like us in a lot of ways. We are interested in prehistoric remains and try to figure out what species came before us. And so did ancient humans. We often come up with theories about how ancient species lived, migrated, or what they ate. And so did ancient humans. The only difference is because we were born in a time where more scientific knowledge has been accumulated, we can make better inferences than them. The stories of dragons and giants are likely the result of early humans attempting to understand the past with the best tools they had at the time. So despite what young earth creationists claim, ancient dragon legends do not necessarily indicate humans actually lived alongside dinosaurs or giants. 
The truth is humans around the world often came across large fossils of extinct species and tried to figure out what they were. For millions of years there were a vast amount of species and they left behind fossils that could be said to look dragon-like. Dinosaur fossils are often found today that could be construed to be the remains of dragons. Ancient people found these remains as well and came up with legends of mythical beasts to explain them. This is a far more likely explanation than the belief that humans actually lived alongside dinosaurs, especially since we find early reports of ancient people being very interested in giant bones. In truth, there is no reason to think humans lived alongside dinosaurs, merely because we have found legends of dragons from around the world. We also find fossils around the world, and fossils as the basis of dragon legends is a more probable explanation.